Hi everyone, Erin here from the Wine Sisters and I am here at the beautiful Vantage Venues. Today we are talking about wine and cheese, some of my favorite topics. I brought in my very good friend, Chef Kyle McClure, Executive Chef of Vantage Venues. How are you doing today, Kyle? Good, how are you? I am terrific. And we have to say, it is finally, finally being spring out. See, promising, the sun is promising to come through the clouds and what's on everyone's mind, or at least what's on my mind, is getting outside and starting to entertain. No longer under the blankets watching Game of Thrones, we're now starting to socialize, yeah? Yep. Are you seeing that a lot here? A lot more parties, a lot of fun people coming out? Yep, it's the time of year people are trying to get in before the summer so that they can actually go and relax at home. Yeah, it's exactly right. So we've got a beautiful spread here. I would like to show people, with your help, how, if we're going to have people into our homes, how we can entertain them in style and put together a beautiful cheese board. And you say it's easier than most people think. It's a lot easier than most people think. It's oh. just about thinking ahead, planning it out, and the assembly is very easy. Okay, so tell me a little bit about what we've got here. So we have some charcuterie and cheese, all locally uh, to Toronto. Most of the stuff here is from Ontario or Quebec. Okay. Um, I have four variety of cheeses. I have a goat cheese, a uh, blue cheese, a hard cheese, and a triple cream cheese. And then I have a few different types of charcuterie. I have a beef, a few types of pork, and a wild boar. And then we just have our traditional garnish, garnishes, uh, some fruit, some fermented vegetables, some pickled vegetables, some accompaniments like that, some bread. Okay, so if you happen to be watching this, because the glory of the internet, if you happen to be watching this from, let's say, somewhere in the United States or somewhere else, you will find reasonable facsimiles in your hometown De somewhere. Definitely, everything is like super relatable. Um, these types of variety of cheeses and cured meats are all very popular styles. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to find them, uh, go to a cheese shop. Um, not only will they really walk you through what goes well together and portion sizes and even the accompaniments that go with it. Um, that's sort of their job and that's what they like to do. They like to talk about cheese. So. Yeah. And even uh, well-stocked well grocery that. stores have yeah. sausages. They may not have these identical things, but they'll certainly have reasonable replicas. Yes, exactly. Okay, now you have this, this is stunning. Yeah, also sourced locally, Black Walnut Charcuterie Board, uh, close uh, rustic designs by Rich is the guy that did this, really great. Beautiful. Yeah. So, but if people don't have something this fancy at their home, and it's fair that a lot of people may or may not, you could use your own cutting board. You could use, like, I guess a dinner plate. Plates, uh, tiles, um, cutting boards. boards. Yeah, anything that you have. Easy. It's perfect because the worst part about having company over is cleaning up afterwards. All on one board. Give it a wipe. Take care of it. As long as you take care of the board properly. Great. Easy, easy. Okay, so show me. You know, what most of us do is we come home and we just plunk everything down, but there's a bit of an art to it, yeah? There is, but also plunking down can be good too. Like, makes it easy, makes it fun. Um, so what I've done is, is I've just kind of pre-cut everything. Okay. Uh, the easiest way to pre-cut everything is to kind of, especially the cheese, is to kind of do it when it's cold, it's easier to work with. Doesn't, doesn't get all Doesn't fall sloppy. apart, doesn't get all sloppy. And then you can really cut it rustically because that's sort of what the nature of a charcuterie board is. So it kind of just like, Find some shapes. Um, don't put too much stress or pressure on how you're cutting it, and you kind of just build it up. Isn't that? Now this one is the hard cheese. So yeah, yeah this is sort of like a mix of uh, Gouda and uh, mix of Gouda and Swiss. Okay. And it is aged on top of cedar, so it gives it kind of a smoky flavor. Yummy. Um, and then so this next here is just some uh, strong but creamy goat cheese or blue cheese from Quebec. I find a lot of people as well are opening their minds to blue cheese. It used to be that blue cheese was a no-go for many people. Now people are getting their adventure on. I feel like also a lot of uh, cheese makers are just being conscious about being user-friendly with blue cheese. Right. Um, they're kind of just making it a little more um, easy to eat, like not as strong. They make it a little bit more creamy now. Um, and it's just a little bit more user-friendly than maybe some blue cheese of the, of the past. And what is this one that you've got? It almost looks like a Humboldt Fog or a Grey Owl or something like that. So this is really similar to Grey Owl. Grey Owl is a really great goat cheese. Um, that's what I was gonna use originally on this board, but I was at the cheese shop and the guy showed me this and I tasted it and I, I really thought it was great, so I got that instead. They're very similar. Okay. This is from Ontario, really local to here. Um, very smooth and creamy. Okay. So there are a few creamy, um, creamier cheeses on this board today. Um, I like what we're doing so far. Yeah, so then this one here is the triple cream. 
Uh, the triple cream is kind of what it says. It's very creamy, buttery. It's almost like a glass of nice, refreshing milk. Yeah. Um, so what I did was is I got the cheese down first, so that way I kind of keep it and the meat separate from each other. Okay, fair enough. And I'll kind of put like a little bit of barrier in here with some bread. I won't put all of my bread on the board. I'll probably have a little side basket of bread for when people come over. Okay. Um, and I'm obviously for home use, if you have gluten cheese, gluten-free people or whatever, of course. use whatever cracker yeah. of bread you've got available. The whole gluten-free thing, there's tons of options for that. Okay. Um, so then the first part of charcuterie I'm gonna use here is just a little bit of uh, cured bison's wild boar sausage. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah, very good. And when you start, uh, when you are separating your meats and cheese, is that for like, you know, dietary reasons and all that kind of stuff? Some people are vegetarians, some people don't want to mix their cheese and meats. Is this the reason why you're doing this? This is exactly why, and I'm also kind of doing the same on my plates. Like, I have the beef on one plate and the pork on the other. I'll kind of try to keep them separate. Um, and again, I'll have the cheese um, separate from the meat just in case for that reason and the reason why I started with the cheese as well is just so I didn't have meat all over the utensils and my hands that I was using while I was putting the cheese on the board. That's very conscious of you. Um, so that's sort of how I would set it up obviously depending on how many people it's for and right. then you kind of just have your ingredients. Now I have it broken or your own confidence and what, how I have it broken down is some stuff goes better with meat some stuff goes better with cheese so that's sort of how I will design it on the board like of course like fresh fruit and stuff goes really good with cheese. So you just kind of plonk it on there nice and easy. Uh, I love that you're making this so easy. Like you're not making it super tough for people. So literally plunking it on there and it's taking yep. you just like, a, like you literally, even though we're stopping to talk, you would have this done in a couple of seconds. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's definitely easy. And that's kind of supposed to be the point. So also nuts goes well with cheese, but I know that mm -hmm. a lot of people some people Sign are allergic. not conscious, so I'll just put mine off to the side a little bit. Yeah. Um, kind of keep it away. Um, so then what I have as far as accompaniments for the charcuterie is I have some nice fermented green beans, all local, all fermented here at Vantage Venues. So you ferment these in-house, but somebody could buy these. Like in yes. The pickle section, in, um, pickle section. Um, also, all of these cheese boutiques and places all sell this stuff. This is unique to you, Ontario. So maybe some people are seeing this and they don't know what the heck this is. So these are fiddleheads and these fiddleheads are actually, and you'll think that I'm lying, but I am not. These are from the forest behind my house. You're lying. So I go out, well, I go out and pick them, but what I do is, is I have a girl that I, I pay to forge uh, wild leeks and fiddleheads that are all in the forest behind my house and we Good. use them here at Vantage Venues. How come you don't do it yourself? That seems a bit lazy. Because I'm here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, so mustards and stuff like that, I just put them right on the board. I don't feel the need to dirty any more plates. Love it, love just it. Just keep it nice, easy, simple. Um, what have you got here? Like a. So this is just a grainy mustard. Also, this is um, locally sourced from a mustard maker. Um, so we are keeping to the trend of kind of keeping everything local and nice and then i just have some rhubarb chutney here which will go nice with the cheese okay and the beef rhubarb in season right now um not yet but this rhubarb is from last season um we jarred it this is also from the same girl that forages the wild leeks I love and the fiddleheads um so this is kind of how the board would wrap up for me um and then of course depending on how many people there are that's sort of like how many would her. this, this is a big board, so how many do you think this would feed? Oh, I don't know. I guess it depends how much wine you're drinking, but... Oh, we'll uh, get to that. <laughs> um, I would say six people, seven people. If, that was, if this was the only thing you were eating, I think that this would be enough. Just, especially the creamier cheeses, they're really rich. Okay. And they really take up some space. So if people are at home and they're having a party, let's say this is going to be amongst other things, rough estimate, when people are at home, what should they bank on, let's say, ounces per person? So if it's just cheese, I would say like two and a half ounces, something like that. If you're having a wide variety of things, it's a little bit less. Um, another thing too is, is if you do ask um, somebody at a cheese shop, they will have it down to the gram for you and like really oh, good. be able to help you out with the amount of varieties you should have, the amount that you should actually have. Um, but yeah, like 
I would say an ounce and a half per person is safe when there's other food in the room. If there's less food, you're probably closer to two and a half. Yeah, because I, I could crush that all by myself. <laughs> now, a couple little points that we have. So basically for you at home, this is gorgeous. I mean, I think our takeaways here are don't go crazy. Use whatever board you have in your cupboard, whether that be a cutting board or a plate or something else. Um, you know, you can you vary it up and have a little bit of fun. Don't stress it out. A mixture of fruits and vegetables and pickles and cheese and charcuterie. And here's a little tip that I have for you, my sort of sommelier tip. Everyone loves to go with red wines with cheese, and so do I. But I find that red wines go better with our harder cheeses and our blue cheeses. My preference, even though I'm a huge fan of all wines, I really like high uh, high acidity wines like this is an albarino one of my very favorite varieties this actually comes out of spain you'll get something similar from portugal which is called albarino but this albarino i think is delicious with creamy cheeses shall we try it yes, are you interested in that yes i am all right so i have a little glass for you a big glass for me well they're actually the same size but my pores are going to be completely no they'll be even they'll be even so you did a good job so this albarino as you can see light bright gorgeous i'll put it right here and on the nose we get some beautiful crisp lemon lime a little bit of that white peach a tiny hint of that kind of pineapple note and on the palate tell me if you get a lot of that acidity that mouth-watering acidity like you just you know bit into a lime or a lemon yep try that with a little bit of cheese i'm going to try this little gem right here how I find this works is that when we start to pair a beautiful, high acid, crisp and refreshing white, when you have something with a little bit of dairy in it, it cleanses your palate and gets you ready for the next bite. The salt and fat in the cheese brings out the aromatics and the fruit flavor in the wine, and the wine cleanses your palate from the cheese. So all around, it's a perfect pairing. Sort of like you and me, Kyle. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming out, Kyle. Cheers. We'll see you next time.